Hi there once again on this video we look at normal distribution okay now normal distribution is what you observe mostly in nature and in any sort of uh, data sets this is what you observe okay is that um, a large proportion of the population would have an average mean value um, and at the tail end um, you'll have a very low number of uh, people okay for example um, let's say I'm trying to do a survey on the heights you know of 20 year old or 15 year old males in a certain region so let's say there were a thousand people so I mean an average height for a 15 year old guy would be about 170 centimeters okay um, so you would say about 200 of them would have that height out of the thousand or even 300 okay um, and as you go up let's say I went up by three centimeters you would say a slightly lower number would have that say 100 um, let's say 200 so the same would apply if you go below that height all right so I've accounted for 700 people now but uh, you would get some really tall guys at that age as well so let's say that accounts for let's say 100 people I know this is not to scale but uh, this is a quick example and as you go three centimeters below 167 okay so for a 15 year old person that could be a reasonable well, slightly short isn't it for that uh, for that age so if that's 100 so I've accounted for um, 600 nine, I've could account for another hundred people so let's say 50 and 50 um, is this height okay so when you're 15 years old you could be nearly six foot but that's a very rare occurrence or you could be even very short um, 161 centimeters so this is what you observe in nature okay or in any sort of data set that people tend to have a high average in the middle but you could get an ex you could have extreme values on both sides but the number of people in that group is very low okay now a normal distribution though looks looks like this okay uh, it has a shape like this okay but the distribution is actually continuous okay so it's not discrete okay so the distribution is continuous so you could work out the proportion of people between bands like let's say 170 was the mean so i can get, work out the proportion between 170 and 160. i can't work out the probability or the proportion of people exactly for 170 because it's not a continuous it's not a discrete distribution so i can only work for work out the proportions for like a uh, region okay we'll, we'll get on that a uh, bit more later on okay but basically what I'm trying to get across is that normal distribution looks something like this okay where you have high proportion having an average value and the extreme values would have very low people all right uh, included okay so okay I'll use this example okay let's say heights of boys 15 year old boys is distributed normally then um, the mean I use that symbol now so that's the mean okay mean this time is the most common value or is 170 all right 170 centimeters right so that's the mean right so if I say that the standard deviation I've got to use this value now so that's the standard deviation for this data set is let's say three centimeters um, okay if that is three centimeters right if something is normally distributed okay now pay close attention here the population between the mean and one standard deviation above which is 173 it incorporates approximately 34 percent of the population okay 
and that's what it is okay if you say something is normally distribution the population between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean would incorporate 34 percent of the population so this, because this graph is symmetrical above the mean the same could be said for the population between one standard deviation below the mean and the mean that also incorporates 34 percent of the population all right that's how it works okay um, if you're really curious as to why this is the case you know read it up on um, Wikipedia or something like that but for this at this stage you just need to remember this okay um, 34 percent of the population is incorporated between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean okay that's what you find if you say a certain data set is normally distributed okay good so if I go two standard deviations above the mean which is 176 okay the population incorporated in this region that is though um, I think it's about 14 percent approximately 14 percent all right so that's how it works and on the other side as well it's 14 percent if I go one standard deviation below the mean which is 164 that would be 14 percent as well okay all right okay I'll show you how I got these values in a minute okay just uh, hang in there with me please thanks now let's look at another another example okay let's look at uh, weight this time okay the weight of 20 year old girls okay what do you think the mean weight would be of a 20 year old girl um well let me be rather conservative in my assumption i'd say the mean weight would be about 60 kilograms okay so the mean weight i got to use this sign now 60 kg and the standard deviation i'm going to use this symbol here if i share the standard deviation is five kilograms one standard deviation above the mean is what 65 kilograms isn't it all right and what proportion of girls would have weights between these amounts 60 and 65 okay like i said before if it's between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean that incorporates 34 percent of the population so here as well is 34 percent okay so because these are fixed values we can straight away say what that proportion is okay that's how normal distribution works okay the population between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean always incorporates 34 percent and if i say two standard deviations above the mean that is 70 kilograms that's 5 plus 5 plus 60 so between this 65 and 70 that incorporates nearly 14 percent of the population all right good what if what if I chose an awkward value like um, 62 kilograms which would be somewhere here wouldn't it 62 kilograms okay now for that I've got to see how many standard deviations away from the mean that is okay now 62 is as a proportion of its standard deviation it's two kilograms away from the mean but one standard deviation is five so therefore it's 0 0.4 away from the mean 0 0.4 standard deviations away from the mean okay now what you do with this value here you have a table of values that tell you um, the proportion included okay as you go away from the mean okay as you go a certain proportion of the standard deviation away from the mean okay what I'm trying to tell you is this okay let me rephrase that okay so when you're one standard deviation away from the mean all right you incorporate 34 percent okay of the population all right but if I incorporate 
this whole value from the start okay if I rephrase this question to what would be the proportion of people less than 65 kilograms that would include all of this isn't it okay all of this wouldn't it all right so if it's symmetrical then this portion will be equal to 50 percent all right so the probability of getting less than 65 is therefore 85 84 sorry i've got to add 34 percent to 50 all right okay now the probability of getting less than 62 okay how would i work that one out okay now i know this much is 50 i've got to work out the area of this band okay now you can't work out the area of that band um, you can't even read it off the tables okay there's a normal distribution table all right um, the normal distribution table only gives you the probabilities below a certain value okay um, okay below a certain value that is above the mean okay <laughs> Um, what I mean is like you can work out the probability of it being less than 62 okay um, but you can't read off 62 you got to see how many standard deviations away from the mean 62 is 62 is 0.4 standard deviations away from the mean now this 0.4 is actually called a Z score now you must have heard of this all the time and you must be wondering what this Z score is a Z score is basically how many standard deviations away from the mean you are all right so this one is 0 0.4 standard deviations away from the mean okay so you look up on your probability on your normal distributions table okay your normal distribution table would look something like this okay 0 0.3 on this column you'll have the z scores and on this column you'll have the probabilities okay now let me look up the probability for 0 0.4 okay now the probability for 0 0.4 is 0 0.6554 the tables always give you the probability of a z-score okay which incorporates this region okay the probability of a z-score being less than this 0 0.4 okay that's what you get when you read off the tables okay all right so the answer to my question probability of x being less than 62 because 62 is 0 0.4 standard deviations away from the mean i can read that off the normal distribution tables the answer is 0 0.6554 okay so let's take stock of what we've learned so far all right whenever you are trying to answer a question in normal distributions you need two variables that you need to know okay you need to know the mean you need to know the standard deviation okay then you've got to standardize it to a z score how you do that is let's say in this example let's say it's heights again the mean height is 175 this time standard deviation is 4 okay and i'm trying to know what the probability of someone being shorter than 179 now i've got to see how many standard deviations away from the mean 175 is essentially i'm trying to find out the z score to figure out the z score i do um, x which is my 179 i take away the mean from the x and i divide it by the standard deviation so 179 minus the mean which is 175 over standard deviation 4 that is 4 by 4 therefore that's equal to 1 okay so i've standardized it my z score is 1 and i'm looking for a probability where it's less than this okay so i can say it's less than x less than 179 because i have standardized i can say z less than 1 okay so I've got to look that up on the tables. The tables only give you probabilities of a z-score being less than a positive z-score. All right. So the z-score for less than one is 0 0.84.
four. All right. Good. What if I was asked to work out the prob probability of x being less than 171? Okay, now when I standardize, I get a z score of negative 1. It's 171 minus 175 over 4, that's minus 4 over 4, which is minus 1. So basically, I'm asked to do probability of z less than minus 1. So if I were to show it on a normal distribution curve, it looks something like this. Okay, I have 175 here, but 171 is over here, so I want this probability. So if I look at this in terms of my standardized z-score, if 179, which is one standard deviation above the mean, has a z-score of 1, 171 is one standard deviation below the mean, it will be minus 1 okay so therefore the mean has a z-score of zero always remember that the mean has a zero z-score of zero okay good now the if you look at the tables the normal distribution tables all right it starts off with a z-score of zero and goes up from 0 0.1 0 0.2 it does not list any probabilities below a z-score of a negative z-score okay so what you'll have to do is through symmetry, okay, work out um, this region after considering a positive z-score region, okay. You could only read off a z-score of a positive z-score, a probability of a positive z-score, okay. So I'm going to consider the positive 1 situation, all right. Now if that has a probability of 0 0.84 below that z-score, then this bit probability of z being greater than 1 should be 0 0.16 because the area of this whole curve equals 1 the outcomes the probability of all outcomes of an event equals 1 so if these outcomes equal 0 0.84 the remaining bit should be equal to 0 0.16 so if that bit is 0 0.16 that is a mirror image of this region isn't it okay so therefore this region must be 0 0.16 as well so therefore probability of z being less than negative 0 point no beg your pardon negative 1 is equal to 0 0.16 okay i hope that helped